Fantasy Baseball and Deck, everybody. This is Austin and Carlos Correa just signed the biggest contract in MLB history for any shortstop ever at 28 years old to join the San Francisco Giants. Let's see what that means to us moving forward. If we look over to uh, Carlos Correa's productivity for the uh, 2022 season that just ended up, he was outside of the top 10 uh, given sh shortstop eligible players. Um, he hit, play, yeah, hit 522 at bats, so that's considered a full season. Um, you know, in any regard, he is not the most productive individual player. It's to see he's kind of a singles machine, um, hits for a high average. But you know, what does this mean moving from a 17th ranked Minnesota Twins offense to an 11th ranked uh, San Francisco Giants offense? Let's say he's gonna, he, they're going to get more productivity out of their shortstop position, sure. Uh, but, you know, was it worth 11, uh, 11 years to uh, a player who's just not ever going to eclipse probably home, 20 home runs again in his season? Let's look at the lineup that they are um, going into. Uh, he's going into whether he hits the two, three, or the four. I'd say Mitch Hanager has the uh, highest upside of anybody in this lineup. And, um, you know, with Marso, Marco Luciano – is um you know some time away he's going to probably debut this next season he has a 65 power rating he's going to most likely slot in at third base either or, or right field um, but you know even slotting him into this <clears throat> roster there's just not um a whole lot of offense that's going to be scored not really sure but if let's let's look at the objective stats um carlos correa if we you know we're filtering by overall uh points scored on the entire season this past year he ranked 61st um for of all players i don't know why he's always had uh, such a high uh, expectation for production when his actual production is so low it's going to talk about his perceived value versus actual value uh, carlos correa is outscored by 10 other players at his own position and he just got signed for 11 the highest big, high, biggest biggest Shortstop contract in MLB history. But again, I am t putting too much emotion into this. For looking at his home runs this past season, he, only had, he, had, he had 22 home runs across 522 at bats. You say that that's okay. But as I said before, when to look over, like as home runs go up and down, um, you, we want someone who's going to hit 20 plus home runs. But as we get some, as we get above the 20, home run threshold the closer we are to 20 uh the more stolen bases we want to see and boy did we see zero he's not a fast he's not an independent player he's not creating uh offense for his team he's hitting a ton of singles and expecting to get knocked around the bases uh, i just i don't understand so if we go to he, again he played an entire season i think he might have had one small il step but he had 522 at bats that considers a, a full entire healthy season um, if we go to his total at bats, which measures his productivity from a volume perspective over the season, um, we see that he was uh, ranked 48th overall um, across all batters. And if we're going to measure his productivity uh, per at bat or per uh, per hit, he actually ranked even lower, down to uh, you know 70 or 69th ranked across all batters, uh, averaging only 1.62. Uh, bases per hit and he's surrounded by some players that you know were not rostered uh, this is what i'm talking about as perceived value guys you know that elvis anders kind of had a uh, a crazy resurgence with the chicago white Sox at the end of the year when he got traded but you know elvis anders essentially was uh, as productive as or more productive than carlos correa uh, per hit on an everyday basis, and this is who is just constantly ranked uh, too high. He should not be a top 100 player, but he is a top 100 player, and that's why we succeed at ESPN Baseball. Uh, they don't put any effort into it. It's all perceived value. They don't really care uh, what their product is. They're going to throw him in the top 100, and like he's not going to produce. Let's go and see, again, where he is within the draft coming up. He's currently ranked 84th. Um, Luis Arreyes, 82nd. Holy crap. These these rankings are so bad that, again, this is why we play ESPN Fantasy Baseball because it's so easy to take advantage of these predetermined ratings that really give us an opportunity to scalp off really good talent later in the rounds. 
Carlos Correa is is not my guy uh, at shortstop. I think the shortstop's like fairly deep this year. If we look at all the guys um, available through the top 84 players, let's say, um, I would be happier taking anyone before uh, Carlos Correa. And um, given his 28-year-old, like they talk about his overall potential um, across the next 13 years, 11 years, whatever he's getting paid, um, 28 years old, he's not going to be gaining uh, necessarily any more uh, power. And with his power not increasing, his speed certainly isn't going to increase. He's not going to be stealing any more bases. He's going to get singles, and he's not going to be able to independently steal his way into scoring position to get those more, get those bonus points, those runs. Um, again, we talked about Marco Luciano, his best season, um, as a major league baseball player was in 2016. So we were talking about six years ago when he was 22, 21 years old, um, at his absolute peak from a physical standpoint, you know, he finished fourth uh, and at 577 at bats, um, and only had, you know, 20 home runs. So, but he was able to steal th- 13 bases and on an offense and surrounded by, absolute freaks at every um, spot in that batting order uh, given the 2016 Houston Astros. So um, what's my outlook going in to this season? I would not take Carlos Correa in any way, shape or form. Um, He's just not a winning pick for fantasy baseball. So that's my quick video tonight. Um, Really appreciate you guys supporting me and things and we'll uh, talk very soon. See ya. Bye.